In this video, I will introduce Russell's paradox. In the last video, we talked about set builder notation. We used the notation x given p of x to describe a set containing all objects x for which p of x is true. However, it is possible for me to set p of x in such a way so that it leads to a logical contradiction. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now let's define p of x to be the statement x is a set and x is not an element of x. So the statement p of x is going to be true if x is a set and x does not contain itself. So for example, the statement p of the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2, this is going to be true because we can see that the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2 is not an element of itself. And so that's why p of 1, 2 is actually true. On the other hand, let's say we have a set called S that contains all possible sets. So you can imagine this is a gigantic set. It contains every single imaginable set that could ever exist. And for this case, uh, we can conclude that S is an element of itself because S is also a set and this set contains all possible sets. So we can conclude that S is an element of itself. And since it is an element of itself, it violates this condition over here. So we know that P of S is going to be false. Another example I can show you is we can define a set A to be the set consisting of the members, the set A, and as well as the number 1. And for this case, you can see that A is an element of itself, and so that's why P of A is going to be false, because it violates this condition. So these are just some examples to illustrate what P of X does. Now that we understand P of X, we are now ready to define the set R. And we're going to define the set R using our previously defined p of x. So r is going to be the set consisting of all members x for which p of x is true. In other words, r is the set of all sets that don't contain themselves. So for example, the set consisting of the numbers 1, 2 would be a member of r since this set does not contain itself. Meanwhile, for the sets s and a, both of these are not elements of r since as we've just shown, both of these sets do contain themselves. And so now our problem arises. Now we want to determine whether R is an element of R or not. So this is now our question. We want to figure out whether the statement is true or false. Now to answer this question, let's first suppose R is indeed a member of R. And if that's the case, then P of R, by definition, is going to be false. And if P of R is false, then it must be the case that R is not a member of R. Because if P of R is false, then this statement here is false, then R must not be inside this set R. And so that's why we can conclude R is not a member of R. And you can see that this conclusion contradicts our initial assumption. It's the exact reverse of our initial assumption. And so because of this logical contradiction, then it must be the case that R is not a member of R. So it must be the case that this statement is false. And so now let us suppose R is not a member of R. If R is not a member of R, that means P of R is true. And if P of R is true by definition, then R is going to be inside this set. So that means R is going to be a member of R. And you can see that this once again contradicts our initial assumption. And so you can see that either in either case, we can simultaneously conclude that R is a member of R and R is not a member of R, which is absurd. And so this is Russell's paradox. And the moral of this paradox is that if we are not careful, set theory can easily lead to logical contradictions.